In 878, at the Battle of Eddington, Alfred the Great was able to defeat the Viking army under the command of Guthrum, which allowed him to maintain the independence of Wessex. Despite the victory, Alfred was well aware that the continuation of an active confrontation with the Danes could end for his state with the loss of independence. Alfred was not a stupid person, so he knew that while the remnants of the Danish army led by Guthrum were blocked in the fortress, it would be much easier to negotiate with them. So he immediately began negotiations. Very soon a peace treaty was concluded, under the terms of which Alfred undertook to pay a large sum of money and recognized the authority of the Danes over the eastern part of Mercia, eastern England, Northumbria and Essex. In turn, Guthrum, along with his close associates, had to be baptized, and also to recognize Alfred's authority over the territories over which the Danes did not have time to establish full control, namely the western part of Mercia, Sussex and Kent. After the signing of the peace treaty on the territory controlled by the Danes, an area of Danish law was formed, the Danelaw. It should be mentioned that the Danelaw was not a state, but just a territory where the Vikings lived under the rule of their own leaders. They were united only by Danish law, as well as an oath, if necessary, to jointly conduct military operations against the Anglo-Saxons. Power in the territory controlled by the Danes belonged to a huge number of leaders. The Danelaw itself consisted of three regions, which can be roughly called the three states of the Danes, namely Kingdom of Jorvik, East Anglia, and the eastern part of Mercia, which was called the area of the five boroughs. As for Alfred, after the conclusion of peace, he immediately began to strengthen his own power. Alfred immediately included Sussex and Kent in his state, but it was more difficult with the western part of Mercia, since in 879 their own King Ethelred II was elected there. In 884, Alfred marries his daughter Ethelflaed to Ethelred II. In the same year, Ethelred recognizes himself as Alfred's vassals and, having renounced the title of king, becomes Yildermen of Mercia. As is often the case, peace treaties between the Danes and the Anglo-Saxons were not respected for long. In 886, several Danish chieftains from eastern England organized a campaign against the lands of Wessex. Since Alfred was ready for such a scenario, he managed not only to repel the attack of the Vikings, but also to go on the offensive. The army of Alfred the Great, as a result of the counteroffensive, was able to occupy London. At that time, London was in a dilapidated state and did not represent any value in the eyes of the Danes, so they did not attempt to regain control over it. Due to the fact that the occupation of London did not lead to the start of a new full-scale war with the Danes, Alfred was able to focus on strengthening the borders of his state. On October 26, 899, Alfred the Great dies and his son Edward the Elder becomes the new King of Wessex. During his coronation, Edward assumed the title of King of the Angles and Saxons, thus becoming the first King of England. This was displeased with Ethelwold, who was the son of the elder brother of Alfred the Great Ethelred I, since he himself expected to become King of Wessex. Ethelwold revolted at Wimborne and began to assemble his supporters. Edward began to act rapidly and very soon at the head of the army was in the vicinity of Wimborne. Realizing that on the side of Edward an overwhelming numerical advantage, Ethelwold hastily left the city and fled to Northumbria. Ethelwold's arrival was seen by the Danes as an excellent opportunity to take control of Wessex. Having received military assistance from the Danes, Ethelwold began a campaign in 902, planning to take the crown from Edward. 
His army landed in northern Wessex and began to move into the interior of the kingdom. The battle took place on December 13, 902 near the village of Holm. The army of the Danes inflicted a crushing defeat on Edward's troops, which forced him to retreat deep into the kingdom. In turn, the Danes also suffered serious losses, and Ethelwold died in battle. Since there was no longer anyone to claim the throne of Wessex, they were forced to return to their territory along with the booty. Despite the fact that the Vikings abandoned the idea of completing the conquest of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms, they continued to make devastating raids. In 906, Danes from eastern England organized a major raid on the frontiers. At the initial stage, luck was on their side, but when they returned home with the stolen valuables, they were attacked and defeated by the Anglo-Saxon army led by King Edward. In order not to remain in debt in 909, Edward, having gathered his strength, decided to organize an invasion of the territory of eastern England. He was lucky on his journey. The Anglo-Saxon army managed not only to successfully plunder the border territories, but also to safely return home. The Danes also decided not to remain in debt and began preparations for a raid on the territory of the Anglo-Saxons. In 910, Ethelred II, Ealderman of Mercia, fell seriously ill, taking advantage of this, one of the princes of Gwynedd, Edward Owen, made a major raid on Mercia. In the same year, a large Danish army under the command of Halfdan II invaded the territory of Mercia and began to plunder everything in its path. The situation was critical, so the wife of Ethelred II Ethelflaed, who, due to her husband's illness, acted as ruler, called for help from her brother, King Edward of Wessex. The united Anglo-Saxon army was preparing to attack the Danish army, which, having plundered a vast territory and not meeting serious resistance, lost its vigilance. On August 5, 910, the Danish army landed near the village of Tettenhall to sack the city itself and its environs. Ethelflaed knew that the Danes, driven by the greed for profit, simply could not sail past this rather rich village, so she hid her army in the nearby forest. Edward's army of Wessex was also stationed nearby. Having landed on the shore, the Danes began to move towards Tettenhall, planning to sack the city. Near the city, the Vikings came under fire from the Mercian archers, which forced them to stop and take up defense. The archers continued to bombard the Danes, and after a while the Mercian infantry attacked. The attack of the Mercian infantry was swift, but it failed to overturn the Danes. A bloody battle began, during which the Danes gathered their forces and began to push the Mercians. It seemed to the Vikings that they had almost won, but at that moment the army of Wessex hit them in the rear. The situation of the Danes became critical, but despite the encirclement, they continued to fight. Numerical advantage guaranteed the victory of the Anglo-Saxons. This was understood by the Danes, who, having gathered their strength, were able to break out of the encirclement and break through to their ships. Not all Danes pursued by the Anglo-Saxons were able to get to their ships. Historians claim that in this battle the Danes lost several thousand soldiers, which significantly weakened the military power of the Danawa. Having been defeated, the Danes were forced to make peace with the Anglo-Saxons. In 911, after a long illness, Ethelred II dies and his wife Ethelflaed becomes ruler of Mercia. To rule out the possibility of further major Danish invasions, Edward set about building a network of fortresses. These fortresses were designed to provide control over navigable rivers, as well as the mainland routes. 
It is important to mention that the fortresses performed not only a protective function, but also allowed the population living nearby to be subjugated to their power. Thus, after completing the construction of a network of fortresses, Edward managed to protect his kingdom from Danish raids. Edward's sister Ethelflaed, following the example of her brother, also took up the construction of fortresses. Unlike his brother, he built a network of fortresses not only on the border with the Danelaw, but also on the border with Wales, since not only the Danes, but also the inhabitants of Wales were not averse to improving their wealth being by robbing the subjects of Ethelflaed. The confrontation between the Danes and the Anglo-Saxons could have continued for quite some time if Edward had not been lucky. The fact is that, starting from 910, the Norwegian Vikings from Ireland and the northern coast of Britain, having established control over the Wirral Peninsula, began to raid in order to subjugate the Danelaw. In this situation, the Danes were forced to abandon attempts to subjugate the Anglo-Saxons and focus on the fight against the Norwegians. The situation was aggravated by the fact that by the time the confrontation with the Norwegians began, most of the Danes, due to the inability to feed themselves by robbery, began to farm and lost their fighting skills. Nevertheless, the Danes fiercely resisted, but the Norwegians did not stop trying to establish their power over the Danelaw. Watching the confrontation between the Danish and Norwegian Vikings, Edward realized that it was difficult to imagine a more suitable moment for an attack on the Danelaw. Having waited until, due to the ongoing confrontation with the Norwegians, the Danes will be weakened sufficiently. Edward in 918, having gathered his forces, invades the territory of eastern England. Advancing deep into enemy territory, Edward encountered an army of Danes under the command of Guthrum II. In the bloody battle that broke out, luck was on the side of the Anglo-Saxons and the Danish army was defeated. The victory allowed Edward to include all of eastern England in his kingdom. In the same year, Ethelflaed, at the head of her army, invaded the area of the five boroughs and laid siege to the city of Derby. After a short siege, the city, as well as the western part of the region of the five boroughs, fell into the hands of the Anglo-Saxons. Despite the fact that the area of the five boroughs was bled dry as a result of the confrontation with the Norwegian Vikings, the Danes fiercely resisted the invasion of the Mercian troops. At this time, King Edward, having completed the conquest of eastern England, invaded the territory of the five boroughs from the south. The Danes were unable to resist the joint invasion of Edward and Ethelflaed, and by the end of 918 the Anglo-Saxons managed to establish control over all of eastern Mercia. In the summer of 918, Ethelflaed dies and her only daughter Elfwyn becomes the new ruler of Mercia, who, unlike her mother, did not enjoy the support of the Mercian lords. Edward simply could not help but take advantage of the situation. In December 918, he removes Elfwyn from the throne and sends her to a monastery. From that moment on, Edward becomes the ruler of a single Anglo-Saxon kingdom and begins to make plans to conquer Northumbria. But in 924 he dies without realizing his plans. If you like this video be sure to subscribe to my channel.